Today on Locked On Rockies, two drastically different uh, projections for two prospects and needing more from the veteran arm. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the 16th day of June in the year 2023. I am your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can also find us on Sirius XM or the Sirius XM app. All you got to do is just search Sirius, uh, not Sirius, on the Sirius XM app. You can search Rockies or Locked On Rockies. You'll be taken to where you need to go. Also get you all your play-by-play action for the Rockies and the Braves all weekend long and all your Rockies action throughout the year. Want to apologize here off the rip in case if I sound a little bit weird. I have a ton of numbing things still in my mouth from some dental work I got done today. But I had to bring you our Rockies talk, of course, because that's what we do around here each and every day is talk about the Colorado Rockies live on the Lockdown Rockies podcast or free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. I'm Paul Holden, your Rockies fan extraordinaire. Love this team my entire life, been following them the entire way, and been bringing you your daily Rockies podcast for three seasons now. I want to talk about some young guys today, and I want to talk about how good Atlanta just simply is, and and you just see it. And uh, maybe maybe I'll start there. Uh, Before we do, I want to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs got you covered for the shorts that you need, and then if you head to birddogs.com dot com slash locked on MLB, you can get a free little yeti tumbler cup with every order just check it out uh, birddogs.com slash locked on mlb i want to uh first start off by giving a shout out to our everydayers including nicholas delbo who's in the live chat right now as normal uh but i I think i am going to start here because i think it'll lead in and we can get into the montero talk later uh, in segment two i think this will be a better way to set it up you watch the rockies play a team like Atlanta. Just like the way I feel when I watch the Rockies play the Dodgers, just like in some, and honestly more often than not the Giants, but the Giants don't fall into this category as much. That's the championship class. Kyle Freeland is a good pitcher and wasn't sharp yesterday. And, and, and when you have an offense and when your team is able to do as many, it just covers the entire spectrum of baseball. That's when you know things are in a good spot. The Braves, they might have small questions, especially dealing with the injuries that they have. But look at they are handling their injuries. They're dominating their division and they're building a massive lead. They're taking advantage of weaker competition in their division. Obviously, they're part of one of the weakest and worst divisions in all of baseball. That certainly adds to it. But that's part of being a good team. That's part of being championship ready. That's part of being able to dominate is because the Braves handle business. The Braves are able to capitalize and do max damage more often than not, especially against weaker teams like the Rockies. The Rockies sent out one of currently arguably what you would say is their best starting pitcher. And Atlanta hammered him. So many solid con. The, as we've talked about before, the biggest risk with Kyle Freeland is if he's off, more likely the, the more likely than not, the opponents are dominating in terms of just barreling balls up and hitting things hard. And that certainly was the case yesterday. Even on foul balls, the Braves were barreling things up. They had Kyle Freeland's number. When you're looking to compare yourself to where the Rockies need to be to be championship caliber, that's where they need to be. In the playoff runs and back when the Rockies were close to winning the NL West, they were taking down teams like the Braves. They were fighting tooth and nail with the Dodgers. That's the standard that you need to get back to, and that's not where the Rockies are, especially not this season. But it's incredibly encouraging to see some young guys have some good moments from against a big-name team like this, and we're going to focus on Ezekiel Tovar a little bit later in the show as he continues to grow and develop into, I think, something special. I don't necessarily think we're going to see rookie of the year caliber from him, but we should be in, uh, in facing another moment in which we as Rockies fans are incredibly encouraged by the young shortstop that the team has. 
This is a moment in the season, though, where Kyle Freeland had two solid starts before this, before this start. This is, though, where you need Kyle to succeed. And it's especially frustrating because Kyle doesn't give up, didn't give up any home runs, but he does give three free passes. When you give up those three free passes, especially on top of only striking out one, that's asking for trouble, especially when Kyle only makes it four and a third. When your starter doesn't, if, if, especially in the Rocky situation, you are putting yourself in a really tough spot when you are put, or are uh, not having your starters go into the fifth, sixth, and the seventh because this bullpen, as we've seen, is already overworked. So when a team, when you're going and facing a team like Atlanta, this is a moment where the Rockies need Kyle Freeland to shine. This is a moment where Kyle Freeland needs to be there and back up his club even though that it, it, it's 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 streaky, of course, because in the last two starts there for Kyle Freeland, he gave up uh, uh, before the one against the Braves. He gave up a combined total of three runs and uh, struck out six while only walking two and uh, giving up ten hits over the over thirteen innings against the Padres and the Royals. But then everything completely falls apart there, and it's kind of it feels like the cycle that sometimes we go through with Kyle Freeland, where it's just like. Why do we have to keep running on this treadmill? It, we need Kyle to be able to string together more consistency and 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 longer stretches that uh, of success instead of just one or two games. This is something that the Rockies are going to need uh, for need to, to be for him to turn to 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 get better because Kyle Freeland is going to be incredibly important as the year goes on. The big concern here already, especially with Kyle Freeland at this point, is he's only seven home runs away from giving up his entire total from last year. The home run total, if the home run totals are up for Kyle Freeland on top of other uh, other issues, that spells doom for the Colorado Rockies, and that spells doom for uh, their chances when he's on the bump. Uh, he's also uh, nearing the halfway point of, uh, of of earned runs given up last year. And when you look at it, he's only 30 walks away from reaching his walk total of last year. There's some big time concern there, massive concern there with, with Kyle Freeland, but there is time to turn it around. He's based, if you basically doubled everything right now, because I'm just doubling it and say it's the Kyle Freeland continues on the exact same trajectory that's less innings pitched in last year. He still he would have given up uh, basically the uh, just amount the same amount of hits that he gave up last year, just under the same amount of earned runs as last year. He would be giving up more home runs, and uh, he would also be uh, almost a, a little under in terms of walks. So Kyle Freeland is showing an improvement when it comes to walks, but these other numbers, including uh, you know uh, batting average and and other advanced statistics against him. Are, are are increasing they, they they are doing a little bit more damage against Kyle Freeland this year even while he's hitting the zone more so when you play teams like Atlanta when you go up against a team like that you got to be able to rely on your veteran guy like Kyle Freeland the Rockies need him in those situations and I hope he bounces back and reverses the trajectory of some of these stats there's some positives there and again like I've preached a lot about Kyle Freeland. Kyle Freeland is a good pitcher. He's probably not great, but he is a good pitcher and someone that should be able to help keep the Rockies in games more often than not, like we saw. But the risks of Kyle Freeland are on full display when a team like Atlanta locks in. Those good teams can do damage against the pitchers like Kyle Freeland and the pitching philosophy of the Colorado Rockies. One player uh, needs to be highlighted as well, uh, especially... Of recent, and it's unfortunate because it is a player that I had high hopes for, and it makes a very complicated picture, and it leads into this as well, uh, playing against teams like Atlanta and 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 moments and major moments for players to step up. One one youngster did it for the Rockies yesterday, even in the loss. Another one, unfortunately, is continuing to scuffle and clouds the picture of him. Let's talk about that coming up in segment number two. Before we do that, though, I got to tell you about our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs got you covered when you're looking for the freshest pair of shorts this summer. I'm currently wearing Bird Dogs. I, you know, do the camera thing. That's way annoying. But super comfortable. They got the sweat wicking, the stink eliminating liner in there for you. If you're a guy like me, a husky kind of sweaty guy, these shorts are perfect because they can stretch with you. They look good and you don't have to be stuck wearing uncomfortable khaki pants all day long. 
especially in the hot summer. Uh, and like I said, you can head on over and get yourself this cool Yeti tumbler, the one that I use uh, all the time here on the show. When you go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB, you're going to get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. All you got to do is just go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. It's going to be added to your order right away. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. We're also bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. Catch us on the SiriusXM app or on Sirius Radio. Just search Locked On Rockies or just search Rockies, and you are going to be able to get that play-by-play action. You won't miss anything when it comes to Rockies Braves when you tune in on SiriusXM. Shout-outs to my everydayers like Nicholas Delvo, Baseball Pig, and Kevin Greenhoe here in the live chat. Baseball Pig says, even though Monty hasn't been performing, I like Bud putting him in the lineup so he can get used to big league pitching. This is the double-edged sword, and it's especially the double-edged sword with the way the Rockies handled Aileris Montero's second call-up with the Rockies. I'm uh, bringing a tweet here from Manny on MB, on, on, on Manny on MLB. Uh, from 20 hours ago, uh, two for 20, two for 29 with 13 strikeouts is Montero. There's the dead man. And, and just, that's the big issue. It's one thing if he's getting out, it's another thing when you're swinging, missing, and you're striking out that much, especially when you need to give the Rockies pop. He is the power guy. And, 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 this type of performance and this type of start to 2023 is incredibly worrying. I, I am putting the worry level at high for Montero just because the Rockies didn't seem to find a place for him in the lineup when he first came up. He's been in the lineup and he's struggling to hit major league pitching. How much up and down, up and down, up and down can we afford for Montero? And how much are, is that does that benefit him? We know he can hit minor league pitching. We know he what he can do down there. So, to Baseball Pig's point, how long do you keep sending him out there? Because this is what he needs to do. This is part of the game. Breaking slumps and going through it and, getting, and figuring out a way to right yourself and get back on track is a key part, especially for someone that's... At this point, Montero is here for offense. Montero is not going to be a factor defensively on this team. They're not going to play. It seems like third base with how bad that went is long gone. There are serious question marks about what to do with Aylaris Montero if he continues to struggle, because how long do you want to give him time at first and leave Michael Tolia in AAA? Do you bring Tolia up to play outfield and get him working more in right field and take in this, in this moment? Because now with Chuck and CJ Crone on the IL, this is where Montero needs to thrive. This is where Montero needs to show us that he can make an adjustment. This is where Montero needs to be the player that he himself thinks that is coming and is able to be. The Rockies need Montero. Plain and simple. This offense needs more thump. This the you there's a lot of things to go back from from the Nolan Arenado trade, but Nolan Arenado was an extra base hitting power hitting guy, and since losing Arenado and even with Arenado and Story in the same lineup and such, the Rockies offense has been on the decline and been mediocre to bad for far too long. If you're Aylaris Montero, you need to be the guy that's going to come and jumpstart and kickstart and bring the thump to this Rockies offense like we hope and expect him to be. Going through it is only going to go so far, especially if Michael Tolia, who's seen some pretty okay, again, not 13 strikeouts bad, but still going through it himself, how much time do you afford these guys? Especially when you're going to have to factor in some of these veterans and you're factoring Randall Gritchick playing time, you're factoring in the, the log jam that exists in the outfield and the other young guys there. The, the the picture gets more and more cloudy and confusing around Aylaris Montero if he does not start performing at the dish. I know and 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 but it, what we like we've seen and part of this too, Tovar's getting better. 
Tovar stepping up. Tovar's playing every day. So that is kind of, I think, one of the toughest things when it comes to prospect development, especially right now. It's a really, really tough spot to find somewhere to play Montero because as uh, Kevin Greeno says, does Coco Montez permanently knock Trejo out of the Major League roster? Maybe not yet, but certainly going to be the, uh, a factor. I mean, if you're if the Rockies are going Coco, then Alan Trejo should be traded. I think teams would be very interested in an Alan Trejo. I think Alan Trejo could certainly do that, but I think Coco, it's still, to, it's the first call up. It, we, Coco hasn't gone through the experience of people have the book on him. You know, because Montero is Montero has had over 100 major league at bats. Lots of major league pitchers have seen him. Teams have the data on Montero more or less so than they do Coco Montez. So let's see. You know, I, I like what I like what we're seeing from Coco. I like what we're seeing for for things, but I still think with that being call up number one and everything, you have to see how Coco adjusts. And baseball pig brings up a good point. Looking back at the start compared to the finish B-Rod had last year, I still have a glimmer of hope for Monty. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the other thing was we knew Brendan Rodgers was the starting second baseman. Just like when we're worried about Tovar's issues, especially with the sliders and the off-speed pitches and the things like that, those players are playing every day as, as, as they should be. I mean, while the, while the IL situation is what it is, I think Montero, and I believe he has been mostly, I want to just double check here because I believe it's definitely changed for Montero uh, since being called up in this, because uh, he definitely started by staying on the bench. And then recently he has been uh, uh, certainly starting more, being more of a factor and, and playing in more ball games here for the Rockies, uh, playing in back-to-back -back games against the Braves there. Um Actually, no, it does. Uh, you didn't have play last night. You got no at bats in the game last night. So, uh, but yeah, he started against the Red Sox. He started against the Braves. He's certainly getting more consistent starting time. But how long are you going to turn to that? And how confident are you there when you also need to get Tolia up here for some uh, some reps during this time where the IL is opening up a massive opportunity for these young guys who are who are hopefully going to play key roles on this team. But it's a great point. Montero should be given and afforded the opportunity to go through it and adjust and get better, just like all, most major league starters do. It's we we've seen Ryan McMahon go through it this year. We're probably going to see it going. We it's it's baseball. These things happen, and it's especially when coming back up, readjusting, and being up and down. It's been tumultuous to say the least. I think for Montero, and that certainly impacts the mental side of the game. But he's got the right mentors around him, including Brendan Rodgers, who wants who is staying with the team and doing stuff and other people on the team who are focused on being able to increase your confidence and build it, and hopefully the Rockies as a coaching staff and as a development staff are going to help him adjust and help him get better and help him get into a position where he can start contributing to the Rockies, especially with power. This is a, I can't emphasize enough. Do you see the stat that's crazy? The Rockies haven't hit a grand slam since, 2000 and, or since 2021. 2021. The Rockies offense needs a kickstart, and I hope it comes in the in, in the opera in the uh, in the form of Montero for him and for the, the story behind him and how he got here. But at this point, I'm looking for just about anybody. And maybe I should be looking at shortstop because there's a certain shortstop who is playing. who he certainly is getting better and better at uh, doing and getting more and more comfortable as a major league ball player and that is ezekiel tovar i completely misread that stat i i, I said he get, didn't get any uh, montero didn't play i was looking at today's game that hasn't even happened yet so, <laughs> so sorry about that i just realized it again fresh out the dentist chair into the podcast booth today here for uh locked on rockies uh let's talk about tovar let's talk about uh what we're liking from him and and, and just i think the biggest thing overall on top of uh, you're seeing it, he's becoming confident being a major league, uh, a major league player. And uh, I think he, I'm really pumped. I mean, I, I think Tovar, well, it's, it's kind of like when you're looking at the worry scale and you're looking at what to flip, my, uh, my emotions about Tovar, my worry level about Tovar, certainly not in the same spot. 
Let's do that coming up here in segment number three. But before we do that, got to tell you about our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook is the spot for you as you go through the baseball season. And if you want to get in on all the betting action at FanDuel, you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. If you want to get ahead on some future bets, all sorts of cool stuff you can do there. At FanDuel, they got the safe and secure app. You get paid instantly, and there's promotions every day. No better place to bet on all the baseball action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies stock right here on the Locked On Rockies podcast and the Locked On Podcast Network here on your favorite streaming service or the SiriusXM app or SiriusXM. Just search Rockies for Locked On Rockies. You'll be taking where you need to go. Uh, let's dive into the live chat before we do that. Check in with our everydayers now here. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Here we go. This one is from Kevin Greenho. Is Daza a AAA? And if so, does he make it back to the Rockies? Daza is a AAA. Does he make it back to the Rockies? I have no idea. <laughs> to be totally honest, I... The DFA was kind of surprising, but the defense that we're seeing from the young guys and the potential of Nolan Jones and Brenton Doyle seems a little bit more enticing than Jonathan Daza. Jonathan Daza might be from, uh, uh, you know, somewhere maybe the Rockies could could look to trade for something. I just don't necessarily know how much you get him and, and how much time you want to go back to and spend with Jonathan Daza, especially when you uh, already were committing... Uh, uh, when when you're already moving things around and you're already you already committed to uh, dropping him down uh, in the lineup, but he's certainly contributing at uh, at the at the minor league level. He's still he's certainly performing here uh, there in in Albuquerque. Uh, it seems like I'm I'm looking at a little bit of highlights for uh, some defense, some offense. Nothing too flashy there for for Jonathan Daza, but uh, we will we will see uh, when it comes to the future of Jonathan Daza, but I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't quite heard uh, too, too much from uh, it's uh, it, it's interesting though. Cause there was, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of hype when it comes to uh, Jonathan Daza, especially for me, I, I thought he kind of had a breakout year, but uh, Ezekiel Tovar folks, Ezekiel Tovar is getting into a great groove. The defense continues to be impressive. The numbers are going up. He's at, he's gotten his, uh, average up his, his batting line currently 251, 289, 703, 30 RBI, three stolen bases, six homers so far. And in his last seven games, he's got two of those home runs. He's, uh, gotten eight hits and 29 at bats. He hasn't got the walks, you know, would like to see him walk a little bit more. Only six strikeouts, though. Batting average 276, 267, 517 with five RBI. Getting more and more comfortable. A hit in at least his last three games. Multi-hit game, including leaving the yard yesterday. It's all coming together, at least to be encouraged and continue to see progress. When you're looking to see, when you're when you're analyzing in your hopes and what you were looking to see from Tobar. I think he's now on the path. We want to see the strikeouts get cut out, especially on those outside, offside, uh, out, outside, off-speed pitches. But it looks like he's adjusting, and uh, he is certainly moving around in the order. They're certainly feeling more confident where they're placing him in the batting lineup. It is a much better spot for him compared to where he was to start the season, and he's concerned. And I think he's just continuing to look more and more uh, comfortable. As this goes forward here, and I uh, want to read here from uh, Thomas Harding here on MLB.com. Uh, Tovar continues hot streak and rookie campaign. Rookie, uh, Rockies rookie shortstop Ezekiel Tovar smashing balls with increasing regularity. Latest examples, 524-foot home run to, the Bra- to center field yesterday. Tovar began hitting the year 172 through his first 19 games. Thursday's two-for-four performance where he bested impressive Brave starter A.J. Smith-Sharver for his sixth homer of the year and added an RBI single off him in the fifth, 
brought Tovar to a 280, 310, 480 slash line in his past 48 contest. Tovar's personal performances were celebrating more often than not. And uh, instead of basking in his stats or wallowing in the team's less than conciliating record, Tovar speaks of the wisdom not often associated with the 21 year old. His words could easily come from manager Bud Black, general manager Bill Schmidt, or anyone with the club who believes the current fortunes are part of the path. The goal is to win, but it's part of a process, so we want to maintain that process, Tovar said in Spanish with bullpen catcher Aaron Menunos uh, interpreting. We understand that it's going to take a little bit to continue to grow together. We understand that even when we lose, there's something to learn from it. You want to win and get that applause and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you're going to grow and continue to do it. Plenty more from Harding there. Uh, Tobar continues hot streak and rookie campaign. Go read the rest of it. But that is what leadership qualities, dedication, mindset, everything seems right for Tovar to grow into the leader, just like is kind of the norm for shortstop for the Colorado Rockies. When he speaks like that, when he understands the process, when he thinks about it, when he and he keeps that confidence, that's great. Obviously, we don't want the losing to take forever, but taking away from it, being productive and getting better is part of his process, and it's certainly working out as a batting average increase of over 100% and increases across the board to every offensive stat on top of already stellar defensive play. The Rockies are better with Ezekiel Tovar, and Ezekiel Tovar has the capabilities to get better. He's impressive, he's fast, he can steal bases, and he's going to save runs. Ezekiel Tovar is continuing to be the promising prospect that we hoped for him to be, and it's great to see that confidence in him uh, uh, playing, uh, paying off. Uh, Clint C., welcome into the chat, says, I am a Rockies fan, but we are still giving up runs. We need a solid pitcher. Yep, that's the same old same old song and dance. And uh, don't necessarily know where it's going to come from. Don't necessarily know what's going to happen. But uh, I think the rotate, you know, the Rockies are just going to fight their way tooth and nail through this, series, uh, this season with whoever can be a starter at this point and just uh, throw them up there and hope for the best. Cause that's kind of the best options they have, unless they're trying to be aggressive in terms of trades that we don't know about or trying to lure some people here to come play. Uh, but that doesn't happen so much during the season and it uh, doesn't happen so much in uh, the great city of Denver, Colorado. But uh, so while one prospect raises questions, our confidence continues to grow in another. And just like we learned yesterday, when you give the Braves too many chances, they're going to take advantage of them. Rocky's got another chance to take down the Braves tonight. First pitch just a couple hours away here coming up real soon. Uh, folks, that's going to do for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. We had a great live chat today, great live show. Lots of people tuning in today. So thank you all so much for making us your first listen of the day. Shout out to all you everydayers out there. When you subscribe to Locked on Rockies on YouTube, you'll know when we go live. And that way you can be part of the chat just like Nicholas Delvo, Baseball Pig, Kevin Greenhoe, and Clint C. All checking us out here on the Lockdown Rockies YouTube channel. If you want to help the show, your subscription to Lockdown Rockies on YouTube changes the game. It certainly helps us grow. Do that, and you put a smile on my face. Folks, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Don't miss out on all the championship nuggets coverage with Lockdown Nuggets and all your other Colorado sports with the Lockdown Broncos, Lockdown Avalanche, and Lockdown Buffs podcast. Folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.